Evil Genius back with you once again, and I told you a few weeks ago that we were going to go through a bit of a new series of programs that I've always wanted to try. I've always wanted to pick a liberal's brain. Really? I absolutely have. So joining us for the next couple of weeks here on this show is a uh, liberal radio personality from the St. Louis... Moderate liberal. Okay, well, whatever. He is a radio personality from the St. Louis, Missouri area named Mark Bland. And uh, he's got a show that uh, comes on every Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central. I think called, you can get a hold of it anytime. You can get a hold of it anytime. It's called The Q with Mark Bland. You can either see it and, and hear it live every Wednesday night on the uh, iWatch Radio Network, mm -hmm. iWatchRadio.com, or they can go by the Q now. Dot com. Is that the name of the website? TheQNow.com. TheQNow.com, and you can catch his uh, uh, previous episodes, his podcast episodes, and there's even a couple that I've shown up on. So that's where you can get a hold of Mark Bland. Uh, uh, going yeah, he shows up on it, but he doesn't do much while he's there. Ha, ha, ha. I, 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 I have uh, totally brought up your ratings over the last couple of weeks. I was told by a couple of women that they are specifically going to get restraining orders against you because of the things you said on my show. They're just playing hard to get. Okay. Nevertheless, what I wanted to do, because a lot of you out there are like me. You you hear the things that liberals say, you hear you hear the things they stand for, and you just you just don't understand how they can think as they do. So I wanted to take a few very general topics, right. uh, one per week here, if you will, mm -hmm. and just kind of pick your brain on these things and, and kind of get an idea of why some of you think as you do. So I, I greatly appreciate that you being kind of the, the guinea pig, if you will, yes. for coming in here and doing this with us. Well, I would consider it much of a guinea pig. I mean, we are in the middle of an election year. That we are. There is a lot of, uh, a lot of bantering on both sides going back and forth. And as we go oh, through yeah. the spring and the summer, it's going to get more and more heated. And we're going to start seeing our debates between Obama as well as whoever mm -hmm. the presidential candidate on the conservative side will end up being. Absolutely. Hopefully Rick Sandor, but nobody knows that yet. We don't know what's going exactly. on. So the topic, the topic I wanted to talk about today is greed, greed, because a lot of the debate going on in this country right now between both left and right revolves around greed. People calling you one group calling someone else greedy, another one saying, no, it's not greedy, it's this or that. So I wanted to talk about the general concept of greed today. I wanted to ask you, mm -hmm. Mark Wend, a few questions about what someone coming from your side of the political aisle thinks about certain ideas surrounding the topic of greed. So, now, let's let's be very frank and to, to before we start. Okay. Okay. Greed is not a good thing in general. Okay? Obviously. Well, no, hold on. Hold on. Greed is not a good thing in general. I mean, there is a reason why it is considered one of the seven deadly sins. I don't think way back in the time periods, well before Wall Street ever existed, before there were Tories and Whigs, Republicans and Democrats, that they would have created a sin called greed if they didn't think it was bad. Do you see my point? That, is, might, that might be the first reference to the Whig Party <laughs> in the history of this show. And I'm pretty sure it's the only time the Tories have ever come up. Alright. So on the topic of greed, a question for you in, in your yes. Whig and Toryness. I demand the next show you come out here in a powdered wig. That would be awesome. I do like the parliamentary pro process that they use in other countries to an extent. I think it's very entertaining to watch. I don't think it actually accomplishes much, but I think it's very entertaining. But to watch. God doesn't make for good television. Yeah, it does. In terms of greed, let me ask you this. When talking about something like wealth, in terms of wealth, right. how much do you think is, and I'm using the air quotes here, how much is enough wealth? Should anyone be allowed to go beyond that threshold of enough wealth? I don't think it's a question of enough wealth versus not enough wealth. Okay. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, you have people like Bill Gates. Bill Gates is not like tabloid cannon fodder who's constantly ripping his money all over the place and destroying companies left and right. You know, that's not what Bill Gates... He's got a crap load of money. Do you see my point? He does have a crap load of money. <laughs> yeah. I don't know so, the threshold for crap hole is, but... <laughs> but but my sure point is, is, I don't think that it's a, it's a question of, of the amount of wealth. I think, and it's not even about really the distribution of wealth, although that, that is a very hotly debated topic. Oh, it is. Okay. Absolutely. But I think it really comes down to how people use it and the tone and the flippancy that they use their wealth in. Whereas you can see a, a, a very distinct dichotomy between smart using of money and just idiotic spending of money. Do you see my point? You just used the word flippancy, which I'm pretty sure you just made up. But <laughs> nevertheless, I made flippancy up. I, but I, you know, hey, you, you get my gist. 
Let's be all. So it's not so much the amount of wealth, but uh, either how it's attained or how it's used once it's attained. I would say, you know, it's not even so much how it's attained as long as the, the way that you went about attaining it was legitimate. I don't care if you're a quadrillionaire. Yeah, that's another word I made up. You can be I'm a, on my way to being a quadrillionaire, actually. <laughs> you can be a quadrillionaire, but uh, but it, it, as long as you did it legally, like, you know, a perfect example, you, do you like NASCAR? I, I don't follow it real closely, but I'm aware of it. Well, of course, I mean, you are Republican, right? Hey, you know, I, I've also... So you have to wear Confederate flags at least once a year. That's, I don't wear them all that often. It's a, it's a requirement, almost. I, I, and I, you have to at least watch the Daytona 500. I have no seen choice. the Daytona 500. Okay. Yes. Well, uh, Joe, uh, one of the famous uh, co uh, coaches in football. Joe Gibbs. Joe Gibbs. He's an owner, right? Yes, yes. He makes his money, a majority of his money, and he has for many years. He started off in football, but mm -hmm. over the last 20 years, he's made a quadrillion mil millions okay. of dollars off of NASCAR racing. I don't knock Joe Gibbs okay. for that because it's a legitimate thing. He enters his cars in, they win, they win, he makes money. Done. So in, in your mind, Joe Gibbs, to use the example, has made his money in a legitimate manner. In a very legitimate, so fair manner that nobody has an issue with. So there's no problem. Now, if you're Bernie, Bernie Madoff, Madoff, do you like Bernie Madoff? I don't know enough about the specifics of Bernie Madoff. Come on, man. Do you I like don't, Bernie I Madoff? I don't know Bernie Madoff. So I can't okay. say if I... If stop I, it, stop, stop, stop. First off, on a personal level... Stop the spit. But let, stop let, the spit. Let, let, let me, I want let you to me stop. ask you, because I think I know what you're getting at here. There are certain things that you say, okay, that's legitimate. If you attain your wealth that way, that's cool. In the case of Joe Gibbs, or in the case of... Okay, okay, it's okay. You asked about Greg, I'm right? Getting, I'm getting my show. Follow my lead here. Yes, sir. So you, you think there are certain things that are legitimate ways of attaining and using wealth. Yes, sir. And certain things that are not. Mm -hmm. Who then makes the decision, or should make the decision, of what is a legitimate way to attain wealth versus an illegitimate way to attain wealth? I think it really comes down to morals. I think mores and social morals already dictate what are good ways. Like, in Las Vegas, prostitution's legal, right? So I've heard. Prostitutes have pimps. Now, have you ever been to the bunny ranch? Oh, no, I'm sorry. We've yeah, had this discussion on my show. Yes, we have. Um, but my point is, is that of a, if you're in an area where pimp pimping is easy, because pimping usually ain't easy, okay? Pimping ain't depending easy. on where you're at, right? And, you know, what if pimping is easy, at. like Las Vegas, Nevada, where it's legal, you know what I'm saying? Actually, outside of Las Vegas. It's but but my point is, Las if Vegas. you're a prostitute who works in a town or an area that allows prostitution, yes. and you have a pimp, I can't really knock a pimp for making his money that way because he's following the laws. Like, if she feels that she needs someone to protect her and to handle the business for her, mm -hmm. and it's legal in the area that they live in, okay. he's not a bad person for being a pimp. Like, that's part of that area. That's their social mores. That's what they agree with. Okay. You see my point? Now, I, I, I see your a Mormon community in Utah might not have the exact same ideals as Las Vegas, Nevada. Do you see my Pimping point? is much harder in Utah, <laughs> is what you're saying. Pimping is much so, harder. So basically what we're getting at here, and, and, and don't make any mistake, uh, prostitution is illegal in Las Vegas. Don't ask me how I know that. But it is some, some areas right, outside of... 20 minutes of outside of yes, yeah. Laughlin. My right. God, you, you, you knew that, that uh, number real quick. Yes, 20 minutes. But uh, basically what you're getting at is that it's the, the legality that separates uh, whether wealth is attained uh, in a legitimate way right. or illegitimate. Right, perfect example, and this is what I was trying to say earlier. Um, Before you get sidetracked with pimps and hoes. Well, no, <laughs> my point is, is this. Uh, we had the situation that went down with uh, Goldman Sachs and all the Wall, okay. Wall Street people, right? Okay. And it came out almost a year and a half, two years later, that, uh, yeah, those companies folded up, but they were still going to do the bonus payouts mm -hmm. to quite a few of the executives at okay. some of these companies. Okay. Okay. Now, if you just trashed the company into the ground okay. to the tune of, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars, potentially billions of dollars in okay. the case of Goldman Sachs, uh, do you think that that person who was a part of that and led to that should get a bonus for that? Okay. When was the last time, uh, you know, you ran a red light or were speeding or were caught by the police and they go, you know what? You did a great job. You did a fantastic job. Listen, I think that you deserve... To get two more red light attempts, and we're not going to like prosecute okay. you more middle. There's two ways to answer that question. Sure. First of all, the bonuses you're talking about were those bonuses illegal? Uh, I would say that once the company is completely debunked financially, there is no money to give them. So I wouldn't say that they were le illegal. They were probably legal when there was money to be had, but when there was no more money left and you claimed bankruptcy, I don't think that you should be allowed to pay out your bonuses. You should be allowed, but but. Are you currently allowed? 
In other words, is, you know, what, you're, what you're saying there is that the law should be that you shouldn't be able to do that. But currently the law is that you can. Well, well, yeah, yeah. The, law, the law states that you can, so, so, is so it, my, that's, there's nothing illegal about them doing that. But I think it's just retarded. And, and, I, and I'll use that in the most loose statement that's not a <laughs> slam on anybody per se. Please send your hate mail to <laughs> Mark Bland in care of the America's Evil Genius Program. <laughs> no, I think it's just kind of retarded in the idea that uh, there's no money to give to these people, and then you claim uh, bankruptcy, and because of the bankruptcy proceedings and the way the laws are set up currently for how mm -hmm. bankruptcy runs, you are able to grab money that is given over to you or whatever based off of how the legal proceedings go to pay off bonuses to people that were guaranteed bonuses from contracts with your company. I, I, I've right. got a vision in my head right now of CEOs going to the Wharton Business School on the short bus yes. while wearing crash helmets. But uh, here, here's what I think you're overlooking this. And, 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 and sure. in all due respect, this is an easy thing to overlook because it took me a while to understand this as well. Sure. Uh, it's real easy and, and logical in some ways mm -hmm. for us to sit here and big say, logic hey, guy. Big, big, logic. big logic guy. It's real easy to sit here and say, X CEO ran whatever company to the ground. How in the hell is he getting a golden parachute? How in the heck is he getting two million, three million, or more dollars in stock options to leave right. when he's done a, a poor job? Right. But there's actually a very good comparison for that, and it goes into kind of a long term sort of thing. Uh, you are quite a sports fan, as, as I, I've been around sports. You've before. been around. You broadcasted sports. Yep. You participated, so yep. you're well familiar yes. with that situation. And all the time, we see coaches in uh, professional and college sports that yep. do not live up to expectations and uh, are relieved of their duties before their contract expires. Just recently, here uh, at the University of Illinois, Bruce Weber was relieved right. of his duties yes, he was. after this year. And I forget the number, but it was something like two million dollars that he got paid out to leave. Uh, likewise, the University of Kansas is uh, still paying off their two last failed head football coaches. And, and that's because of guarantee, those are because of guaranteed contracts. Yeah, exactly. But here's the thing. There is one difference between what you're getting ready to go okay. at as your, as your angle and that. Those companies, i.e. schools, mm -hmm. are still viably working financially mm -hmm. backed institutions that are not in financial troubles. They're not... Failing, they're not calling for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Okay. They just happen to have parted ways, and there's a guaranteed contract on the table. So they say, okay, we were going to have you for 10 years. We only had you for eight years. We owe you two million dollars because a million dollars a year. So we're going to pay you off two million dollars for the ninth and the tenth year, and you move on. We're going to go get ourselves a new head coach. They're not going, hey, uh, the school's completely falling off the map. All the students are going to stop going here. We are going to file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy and pay you $2 million because the school is failing. It's not a case of that. You see, so in the case, they understand what they're doing, and they're making that decision to pay them that $2 million. So in the case of either, in this case, a college or a pro team that's getting rid of a coach, right. or a company that it has not filed bankruptcy but... Needs to yeah, the company's not failed bank, filed so bankruptcy, you're saying, they can do that. So what you're saying is that you should then go ahead and, and uh, make the agreement to swallow that poison pill, if you will, to pay this guy to get him out of there so he's not well, that's a decision that, more money. That's a decision that each company or school in this okay. case we're talking, has to make on their own. So, it's not a question of, of whether that's right or wrong. That literally comes down to... Do we want to swallow this pill? Okay, fine, we'll swallow this pill. So it's, in not, terms, it's not Mark's ideals dictate that we should swallow this So pill. in terms of a bankruptcy situation or a situation where has got to be, you know, a, a bankruptcy situation where you're having to divvy up creditors and all that kind of yes. thing, are you saying that the former CEO who is being let go prior to his contract ending, that he's not a legitimate creditor? I would say that... Is, he's a, is he not owed money like all the other creditors are? To make this understandable to you, based off of no, 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 based off of your idea of the whole coaching situation, mm -hmm. if the school files bankruptcy and the coach still has two years on a guaranteed contract, at that point the coach probably is going to have to talk with his lawyers. But there's a really good chance they're just going to have to suck it up and go. We're probably not going to get our two million dollars for the last two years of our contract. It's just not going to happen because the school filed bankruptcy. Therefore, they can't afford to pay us. Therefore, I'm not going to get that last two years. Like, no matter what, how guaranteed my contract is, it's just not going to happen. So does that then put the coach or the CEO 
in a similar position of any other creditor to where, okay, we know there's some financial trouble and they owe us, you know, the, the ABC widget company. Okay, now. They still owe us $2 million. This goes back to your so original would, question. So should we go ahead and try to fight for whatever piece of that we This can goes do? back to your original question. How much wealth is too much wealth? How much greed yeah. is too much greed? Um, you know, at a certain point, you're a coach. Like, I love the coaching aspect because yeah. it, 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 it runs that fine line. It's a good, good yeah. idea, good analogy. Um, I've been coaching for eight years, a million dollars a year. I was not aware. Oh, 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 you meant in, in theory. Oh. In theory, hypothetically. I know that it's very hard for conservatives and Republicans, especially whack job Tea Partyists, to understand the idea of hypotheticals. Although, the, the whack job Tea Partyists, I feel, are the ones that should understand hypotheticals better than anyone since they make up so many. Go with on, go collusions on. for 9 11 and everything else. <laughs> okay. What? <laughs> you have. This situation where for eight years you coached, yeah, you made eight million dollars. Mm -hmm. The school files for bankruptcy. Okay, Just okay. Listen, okay, okay. Goldman Sachs, you worked for them for fifteen years mm -hmm. on a twenty-year contract. Fifteen years on a twenty. Oh, mm -hmm. that's a long contract, but still. Yeah, fifteen yeah. years on a series 20 of contracts. Series yeah. of contracts. Okay, uh, and they were paying you a million and a half a year, mm -hmm. or two million a year. Okay, after fifteen years, you make thirty million in Goldman Sachs. This coach makes eight million over eight seasons. Okay. okay, that's a lot of money. Be honest with me. It's could you live uh, in this where you live and in, in the area you live in and for the lifestyle that you lead? Could eight million dollars handle sure. you for eight, eight but, years? Sure, it could. But I'm not sure where that comes into into play. No, 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 no. Okay, okay. what I'm owed. Hold on, hold on. I understand that. But at a certain point, you have to step back. It's about the other person stepping back at a certain point and going, "I've made eight million dollars. It's obvious I'm not going to get my extra two. Uh, the situation's not good. We did what we can. I'm gonna go find somewhere else to, you know, do. It. If you're gonna be the boyfriend who just keeps kicking on the door after the girl tells you it's over, you're gonna you're, you're get used to that, aren't you? <laughs> you're gonna get tased. You know what I'm saying? You've done that a couple. They're gonna times. tase you. The cops are gonna come and they're gonna tase you. And they're gonna take you away. Don't be that guy. So, just be like, okay, it's cool. I'm moving on with my life. I made some great money here. So okay. basically what you're saying before you got into that really uncomfortable stalker analogy <laughs> is... I just was looking at that back door going, I know for a fact that there have been situations where guys were banging on that back door going, It's not over, man! What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> I'm not talking... Oh, I'm sorry. Basically, you're what, straight. You're what, straight. What, I'm yeah, sorry. I, uh, but I was not the original owner of the house, so who knows. But nevertheless, what you were getting at yes. was that... There okay, should be some morals. Even, even, even though you have some right legally to be paid what you're owed you're saying that if you've made a certain amount which is kind of nebulous in what it is when you've made a certain amount if you've had a good run you should just kind of in a case of a company that is uh going belly up you should just sort of back off and say hey bygones as long uh, as even though i'm owed this money y'all as long it. as it's not in chapter 11 bankruptcy or a company that is completely folded do you see my point yeah. like if it's a company that's not folding then yeah by all means push your issue you know, get the money that you were guaranteed in a contract because it's not going to be any sweat off their back. They want to make the contract in the first place if they expected it to okay. fold. Do you see my sense? Yeah, I, I see where you're coming from. I disagree, but I, I see. Yeah, no. But I see where you're coming from. So, in, in kind of closing, as we're going to wrap this up, would you uh, would you acknowledge that there can be some positive aspects to a man's greed? I think you would, uh, in terms of what you said about Bill Gates. Or I right. think that, uh, but I don't think that there was any positive aspects to Bill Gates' greed. I think that, you know, I think that greed... This is a good computer. I think it's a pretty positive aspect to Bill Gates' hold greed. Hold on, hold on. I, but that wasn't because of Bill Gates' greed. That's because of Bill Gates' um, ingenuity. That's not because of his greed. This so, machine existing does not is not because of his, of his greed. So it wasn't like he he's like a... sitting there playing PlayStation or Atari back in 1981, going, you know what? I really would like to build that thing over there that I know is going to change the world, but I need more fucking money, man. So I'm just going to keep playing Atari. Language, language. That's, language. Language. that's language. not that's not how the situation worked out. He was he went looking for the monies that he needed to uh, because you got to remember in every situation. At the beginning of it, most people are not greedy by any nature or sense. In We're most not. cases, they're looking for specifically the amount of money they need to accomplish the goal they want to accomplish. So, now, so nobody if that becomes dreams, popular. So nobody has dreams of so being awesome. able to provide more for their family. Oh no 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 no, no 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 no! You're missing the point You're because the point. that's greed. It's a positive greed. Okay, but that's greed. Listen, if a TV station came to you right now and said, "We love America's evil genius," and well they should. Okay, and well they should. 
uh, America's Evil Genius. Uh, we'd like to put you on the air, but we're not willing to pay you. But we'll give you a time slot and, and a place to do this every week, and we'll put it on the website and we'll promote it a little bit for you. But we're not going to pay you a single dime. You're not going to make okay. any money. Would you accept that offer? Uh, depending on a lot of other factors, uh, it's a good likelihood that I would. Okay, but now, the reason, the reason, wait, wait, why would you the reason I would is because I know it would be a foot in the door, so that later on down the line, exactly. I could make money out of the endeavor, exactly, and That's I could point. sell books and so forth, and That's I'm doing point. all of that because I'm greedy, because I want to make the money. No, 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 no. Eventually, it's in the long term. That's not That's not why you did that. You knew it. Hell, it's not! Stop. <laughs> that is, that you, what you just News to me! <laughs> what you just explained to me, Travis, was that you are willing to take a step back to go five steps forward. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Exactly. And that's good. And then taking that five but, steps forward. But, but Bill Gates was in the same position. Steve Jobs was in the same position. Uh, Bernie Madoff was probably in the same position at one point in his life. You're not, your, your greed is not over about, it's not like if they came with that offer to you, you would immediately just turn it on them and go, yeah. no, I need a million dollars a year and you're going to give me guaranteed contracts for the next 10 years. That's greed and it's honesty. I it's the most honest sense. That's true greed. I think that both situations you describe would be considered greed. It's I don't just, think so. It's just the degree to how much greed. No, I don't and, think so. And no, how no, no, logical no. your long-term greedy implications Greed are. has to do with morals. If you would have turned the tables on them and you would have said, I want a million dollars a year, before they even offered you anything, you said, no, I don't like your offer. I'm going to give, I, I want a million dollars a year. That is just straight up true greed to the point where they would turn around as they're looking at you and they go, See, I, 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 don't, I don't think, we're just I don't think that would be considered greed as much as a stupid business decision. Because obviously in the position I'm in, that's if I turned around and said that, if I turned around and said that, I obviously would not get That's my it. point. So you just said it's a stupid greedy. business decision. That's, that's right. Greedy. It's that's just bad business. Okay. So no, that is greed. To the extent. How do you not explain that that is greed? Because greed is what we all have when we want to make something more than what we have, which is something we all want to do. It's just the way you present it. That's now, still greed. There are some forms of greed that Greed's are a pretty general umbrella. It is a general umbrella. So you can, you can approach it. Umbrella, it's a general umbrella that's used by the left an awful lot as a You can so, approach greed from a thousand different directions. Absolutely. And I just gave you two. Absolutely. You said that it was, it was a, a low form of greed to accept their offer to do the TV show without getting paid. Yeah. And I said that it was a high form of greed to turn it and say you want a million dollars and screw you guys Absolutely. unless I get it. Absolutely, and that's, that's what They're I'm both saying. greed in exactly. your mind. Exactly. But in my mind, and this one isn't greed, this one is totally greed. Because in my mind, greed means that you're willing to go above and beyond all scopes of business sense as well as moral sense to try to attain something that is just... To most people, it's it's like it's like the guy who spends a thousand dollars a week on the lottery because he just knows for a fact he's going to win the lottery. Okay, we're not saying that you won't. We're not saying that you want to have a better chance by doing that. What we're saying is is that dude, a thousand dollars a week on the lottery is a lot of money to be spending on the lottery. You can spend a hundred dollars a week, still have close to the same amount of chances. I mean, I mean, yeah, thousand, yeah, it's, it's, it's so it's so infinitesimal. The, yeah, 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 the, the ratio is yeah. so close. And you'd be saving money over here and still getting out of it what you want out of it, is my point. Okay. So basically what you're saying is that in, in your definition of greed, mm -hmm. which I, I think we would acknowledge is probably different for every single person. And I think what would be smart, you've got the internet here, right? I have one in their internet. <laughs> you got <laughs> the internet. Which you should, you should do. Which you should do. And maybe we should do this also before the end of the show, is um, go in and read the actual Webster's definition of greed. Well, the problem is most people don't go and look up Webster's to say, okay, here's what or I think. Or whatever. whatever which, when, when you're looking at the Occupy Wall Street crowd. I don't on, think Fox News has a dictionary, so we might want to go look <laughs> up on Webster's. They're a, pretty, they're a pretty good organization, and I think they can afford one. But the point of this being, regardless of what Webster or anybody else says the definition is, the left right oh, now... Oh, so you're America, just unwilling to do it because well, you don't want to... Let me explain why. Okay. The left in America is defining greed in their own terms right now and forcing no. the discussion to be down that, that road. And all what, what, saying, what terms do you think that they're defining it in? I would love to hear your opinion from your side of the aisle of the uh, idea of what you think the left thinks greed is. The maximization of profit. There's nothing wrong with the maximization of profit. I agree. And if, and frankly... Don't you understand that the left is more... The, the, okay, listen. The right is more business oriented. Absolutely. The left is more... I wouldn't say emotionally. I would. I, I would say that there's. I think that there is a there's a level of emotional as well as logical um, 
like you mix emotional and logical together and you'll get a pretty strong, hefty feeling of what the left is like. Whereas a lot on the right is business oriented. Yes. Like it is, it's not even a, it's not so much a logical thing because literally a person on the business side of things will step past logic if they feel that they can offset their profits and get a better bang for their buck. Literally. Which you're using like, logic too, but they'll step past emotion is what you're saying. Well, no, no, no. They'll step past logic and emotion because think about it. Like, they might make these computers out of this certain polymer mm -hmm. or, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Polymers polymer. are awesome. Yeah, polymers, yeah. okay. But because they know that they can go to this new company's polymer, it's a little bit cheaper, mm -hmm. not as durable, but it'll mm -hmm. save them 30 cents, 50 cents, yeah. and they'll maximize the profits. So they'll do it anyway. Yeah. Even though Every everyone likes possible. what they got, no, everyone already yeah. likes what they got. Why would they go that extra? They're just willing to overlook what works and what is sturdy and what is good to maximize profits. That's why you get Chinese companies that will, you know, uh, do the the Chinese finger things or whatever, like finger cups and stuff like. Oriental trading companies and things like that. They'll the just crappiest little plastic things for fifteen cents. They'll turn around and sell them to the dollar store for 30 cents. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? It's business. But but you can find the same thing at Walmart. It's going to cost you two bucks, but you can tell. The plastic's a little bit better. Everything's a little bit more well-made on it. It's like, okay, at what point do you forsake quality for quantity? At what point? Well, it all comes down. Of course, this is something every separate businessman can answer on his own. But it comes down to your tolerance for risk management. In other words... If I'm going to reduce quality, as you say, by a certain level, because I can get materials cheaper or something like that, what is the likelihood that my uh, customer base is going to say, hey, I don't like that, I'm going to shop somewhere else and not buy your computer or your Chinese finger trap or whatever. I'm, I'm going to run a certain no, no, amount of risk. Yeah. I'm, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm going to run a certain amount of risk when I'm doing that. Now, if I think the potential profit is more, than the risk I'm taking on. You know that might be you're take that it. might be the kick on greed. That might you what you just said might be the kick on greed. Something that I never thought about until you just said it. The right is more they're more gamblers. There's more gamblers on the right, and when you're gambling, you're just looking to get the win. You're not looking for all the stuff in between. You're just hoping you you play poker, right? I play a lot when of you game. when you gamble, a great analogy. you make a move in gambling, and sometimes you're bluffing, sometimes you're not bluffing. But every move you make is in a gamble to attain more and more or better. Let me, let me ask one question for this, and and, and you don't have as many gamblers. I'm, 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 gonna, I'm gonna wrap I'm gonna wrap it up. With sure, this. sure. Um, and this is going way off on a tangent, but you'll see where I'm going. Do you consider poker to be gambling? Do you, do you consider poker to be like the same type of game as uh, blackjack or roulette or something like that? Of course it is, because any game that has a, that there is a, listen, all games at a certain point, any game that comes down at a certain point to luck or a chance, like you can sit there and argue with me being a poker player all day long. I got this skill and I got that skill and I got that skill. But and at a certain point, you're going to take your deuces, a pair of deuces, and you're going to knock out a dude who's trying to bluff in on a situation with his skills, your luck is just going to take you over to that next level and you're going to beat him. It's going to happen. But and that's what I'm saying. It's a game of chance. And anytime there's a chance, and it's not a fact or a guarantee, it's a gamble. And here's the difference, and we'll, we'll kind of wrap it up with this, because um, you, you have backed into a great illustration of the difference in the mentality of the left and the right. You're, okay. you're looking at that calling down the guy who's bluffing you mm -hmm. as a bit of luck. No, 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 no. Calling down the guy that you, that's bluffing okay, you. That's, you that's the situation you described. The, the, no, I'm just saying that at a certain point, there is a, a level of chance. Because, like, you got yeah. you got ace, ace queen, and he's got ace king. Mm -hmm. The ratio is very small between yes, the two is. of you, and you understand these ratios yes, very well. Yes, because I've been nailed on ace queen several Okay, times. okay. So, at that point, it literally comes down to, you can't see his cards, you don't know what he's got, you're both playing for the pot the same way, you're both bumping each other left and right, trying to get the other Depending one in jack, on you know, the situation. Eventually, everyone's just going to call it all off and go, flip your cards. It comes down to chance at the end. No matter how well you played or what you get, it really comes down to chance. Well, he doesn't know what you have, and you don't know what he and has. And here's the difference. Here's the difference, because... You and I both would agree there's an element of luck in poker, as there is in business and, and, any, other, and everything. any other endeavor that a human being undertakes. All right. But in that case, you mentioned with the ace queen and the ace king, there's a lot of other skills that are involved. They can actually push the guy off the ace king. Of course. If you have four to a suit on the board, you can play it in such a way where you represent the flush. 
or you could represent a straight, or you could represent another type of card. So, right, but that's also luck too. That all depends on what cards come up. Potentially, I mean, it, I mean, it's like if, if you got uh, three, four, yeah, you know, and you got ace, you got three, four, five, and you got, can you go ace two, three, four, five? Yeah, 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 yeah okay, okay. Tell so, you yeah, three, four, five, and you got the ace queen underneath. They see the three, four, five on the table. That wasn't your pull. That was just the luck of the cards that came up that now make your ace look like a big part. So what we would then agree on is that poker, or by extension, most any other endeavor human beings take place in, is a game of calculated risks. Right. And here's the thing that's funny about poker players. I got a friend named Andy. He plays a lot of poker. Or at least he used to quite a bit. He used to go around in tournaments. And like yeah, I probably beat him at some point. Uh, uh, it's very possible. I don't know. But what I can tell you is he would, get, else he would get bumped off of tables on crap. Like yeah. somebody would come in with pre-flop stuff or stuff like that and just bump them off tables because I don't know much about poker. Obviously. From what I'm I've not seen. sure what pre-flop stuff is. But, go ahead. but no, no, just, you know, pre-flop, he would get bumped off of a table based off of someone jacking the pot real high to the point where you're like, do I even want to Yeah, stay? that probably was me, actually. I'm just saying, that kind of stuff happened. He would get so angry about it, and i go, well, that was just that guy's decision. Yeah. That guy made that decision. Why are you so angry about it? You, it was your choice to back out. Indeed. You see, he, he, he did not, and sorry, Andy, if you're listening. I actually don't know who you are. I'm joking a bit here. But uh, yeah, he did not properly analyze the situation. And, and may have put down a hand that was a better hand. So Potentially, that's, I don't know. So that's the risk management that we go through in poker and everyday life. And I think that tolerance for risk management might be showing a bit of the difference between we who are conservatives and some of you who are liberals. Economist and author Walter E. Williams has said that in a free market, dollars are essentially certificates that show you how you have satisfied your fellow man. Therefore, it can be stated that money can be viewed as a rather good measurement of how well individuals have contributed towards their fellow man's quality of life. The more money you attain, the more you, or at the very least your predecessors, have provided goods or services to your fellow man for which he assigns value. Therefore, the pursuit of money and material wealth is largely a positive thing for society as a whole. Now, can greed be harmful? Yes, and we just discussed this. Yes, it can be harmful to the extent that sometimes uh, people will take the short-term pursuit of greed and, and it might tempt them to make some decisions that are less than optimal in the long term. However, the long-term pursuit of money, the long-term pursuit of success, the long-term pursuit of material gain is precisely what has brought man to the advanced quality of life that he enjoys today. It is ridiculous to try restricting a man's pursuit of wealth because to do so inherently restricts his motivation to accentuate the quality of life of his fellow man. And that hinders, hinders us all from the continual betterment of humanity as a, as a whole. You have to think of the incentives that people have to do well by their fellow man. Frankly, a free market economy and the pursuit of wealth is the biggest incentive towards having us do what is necessary to provide for and to better the life of our fellow man. To borrow from Gordon Gecko, greed is not only good, but it is one of the fundamental building blocks of human existence. This is America's Evil Genius. We'll see you next time.